Hello, I'm Janice Cortez. Today, let's demystify some of the work of Pablo Picasso using my painting, Homage to Marie Therese Walter, as our starting point. The story begins with a chance encounter. When 45-year-old, unhappily married Picasso saw the 17-year-old schoolgirl, Marie Therese Walter, on the busy sidewalk outside a Paris department store in January, 1927, he stopped her, saying that she had, quote, an interesting face, and that he wanted to do a portrait of her. She was charmed and flattered, and she said yes. In that moment, one of the most creative muse-artist relationships in the history of modern art was forged, and its impact on Picasso's work is the subject of my painting. Picasso's long working life falls into individual chapters, each can be defined by one of his several muses, women who serially inspired him. However, the remarkable creative explosion incited by Marie Therese Walter, whom he clearly loved in a unique way, was never to be equaled in the enthrallments that followed it. I must make a confession here. Picasso is not one of my favorite artists. The primary exception to my disinterest is the work he did in that period between 1927 and 1941, the 14 Marie Therese years. Five examples appear on the wall that's shown in my painting. From the upper left, we see an ink and wash drawing dated 1936. At the center, a 1939 portrait with reassembled features. Next, the painting Nude, Leaves and Bust then the fresh and lyrical Marie Therese with a garland, and The Dream, both from 1932. Among the still life objects I chose to place on the chest are a 1937 photograph of Marie Therese, a Cecil Beaton photo of Picasso posing with his painting Nude Leaves and Bust, which is shown above, and a hand-painted earthenware vessel made in 1950. Although that clay vessel was made after the Marie Therese years, I included it because of its happy offering of a toast. It's so like the spirit of my own tribute to Picasso's muse. Judging by the visual evidence left to us in his work, Marie Therese, unlike Picasso's other muses, seems never to have completely left his consciousness. I see in the spontaneity and cheer of that toast painted on a clay pot a subtle throwback to the remembered, playful, optimistic grace of Marie Therese. Such reminders of her long influence became more overt in some of Picasso's very late work. For instance, even in his 91st year, his long discarded statuesque blonde goddess was still making appearances. Her unmistakable profile and voluptuous form can be seen occasionally inhabiting the hundreds of cartoonish, erotic drawings and etchings he made near the end of his life. To my mind, the overall coarseness of that work is eased each time we spot Marie Therese playing the role of artist model once again. Now with lessened power, but still gently guiding some aspect of Pablo Picasso's psyche to a higher, calmer plane. Next time you look at Picasso, Look for Marie Therese. There's a good chance that you'll find her. If you enjoyed this episode of Demystifying the Masters with Janice Cortez, like it, share it, and subscribe to our channel. If you are an art collector planning to enhance your collection, we invite you to view more of the Cortez work at JaniceCortez.com.